beginning to think we shouldn't be out here, that we should turn back. But there's something hypnotic about the sun, like Medusa, too terrible to look at, too powerful to resist, luring us onwards, on like a moth to a flame. Dwarfed by, scorched by the sun, it's Mercury. Get too close to the sun, this is what happens. Temperatures swing wildly here. At night, it's minus 170 degrees. Come midday, it's 400 plus. Burnt, frozen, and look at those scars. A sign that Mercury had a violent past. The messenger space probe is telling us something strange. For its size, this little planet has a powerful gravitational pull. It must be heavier than it looks. It's like a huge ball of iron, covered with a thin veneer of rock, the core of what was once a much larger planet. Maybe a stray planet slammed into Mercury, blasting away its outer layers in a deadly game of cosmic pinball. Whole planets on the loose, destroying anything in their path, even entire planets. And we're in the middle of it. Vulnerable. Exposed. Small. Everything is telling us to turn back. But who could defy this? The sun. In all its mesmerizing splendor. Our light. Our lives. Everything we do is controlled by the sun. Depends on it. And more than that, it's the Greek god Helios driving his chariot across the sky. The Egyptian god Ra, reborn every day. The summer solstice sun rising at Stonehenge. For millions of years, this was as close as it got to staring into the face of God. 150 million kilometers from home, a 20-year journey by plane. Switch it off, and it's so far away, we wouldn't know about it for a whole eight minutes. It's so big, you could fit a million Earths inside it. So heavy, its gravity controls the entire solar system. But who needs numbers? We've got the real thing. We see it every day. A familiar face in our sky. Up close, it's unrecognizable. A turbulent sea of incandescent gas. The thermometer rises to over 5,000 degrees. Down in the core, it's got to be tens of millions of degrees. Hot enough to trigger a nuclear reaction, turning millions of tons of matter into energy every second. More than all the energy ever made by mankind. Back home, we see this energy as light. Feel it as heat. But up close, there's nothing comforting about the sun. It's so full of electrical and magnetic activity, it's bursting out in these huge incandescent gas loops called prominences. Each one releasing more energy than 10 million volcanoes. You could get the Earth through one of these loops and still have tens of thousands of kilometers to spare. And where they burst through, it's exposing the cooler layers below, making sunspots. They're a fraction cooler than their surroundings. It's why they look black, but they're still hotter than anything on Earth. 
and they're massive too. Some of these are at least 50,000 kilometers across. A solar flare. A superheated stream of electrified gas blasting deadly radiation out into space. But one day, all this will stop. The sun's fuel will be spent. When it dies, that'll be it for the Earth as well. This god creates life and destroys it, demands we keep our distance.